the complete system of how to invite someone to the business and have more of a success with it. I kind of call it a failure to launch and a failure to really make any step forward. It's a complete system teaching you how you're going to be building your business, both by attraction marketing, as well as actually going out and prospecting and having people join the business because you're taking that action. So I want to keep it simple, but I also want to make sure that you're getting what you need and feel confident in taking that step forward, helping you really have a solid system of how to capture leads, as well as how do you share the business with people to be able to grow your business quicker than not. Now, the first thing is um, I put up here at the very top a system. The challenge with where in all the years that I've been coaching coaches and I've made plenty of mistakes is where there's a failure to launch or where there's confusion or where someone's excited and they say they're going to do so many things, but then they don't take any action. Why that usually is, is because they don't feel that there's a system that they can dig their teeth into and follow. If you're told what to do and you know what you should do, but you're not doing it, it's mostly because you don't feel confident in the actions that you have to take to do it. So most of the time against leadership's will, you might want to create a checkbox system or a template system. I usually don't like to have scripts, but everything that you're going to use can be guided by a script as long as you change it to make it to be your own words for that person. So that's the first point that I wanted to have put out there is you have to have a system because a lack of system is going to create insecurity. It's going to create doubt in yourself and it's going to fail, make you fail to launch. So anything that can be measured is where you're going to have growth. And what I mean by that is if you're not using a daily action tracker or a contact conversation tracker list, there's no way for you to measure your forward motion growth. Every time the month is ending, it's always a reminder, especially if you're working towards achieving success club, have you had enough conversations with people? Do you have an action to always move forward rather than just let another month pass? Now, that's kind of my marker. Obviously, in the business, um, for those of you who do or don't know, I was the first person in the entire company to hit the top rank, which is 15 Star Diamond. My team and I did that in my first year and a half of business. My, very, my first year and a half of my business, I was working a full-time job for Shalene Johnson, and I also had three fitness part-time jobs. My husband uh, worked an hour away and was gone for 12 hours out of the day, and I had a one-and-a-half-year-old son and a baby in the oven. So that's how I started. And in the first year and a half of my daughter, so my daughter turning one, is when my business center was 15 Star Diamond. I did not try to achieve 15 Star Diamond because I didn't even know what it meant. I didn't even know it existed. What I was working hard to is help other people move their business forward because I didn't know anything about network marketing. I didn't have any experience on that. But what I was stressed about is I asked people to do this with me. I got to tell them what to do. And that's where I focus mostly is helping people move their business forward. Then I was also the um, first coach in the company to achieve 15 Star Diamond on a second business center in the company as well. Now, the reason why I share that is because it seems like it can be easy to do and it's painfully hard because trying to have a bunch of people doing the same thing at the same time is really hard. So I don't really always obsess about focusing on achieving a rank. But I feel when you're in the beginning phases of your business, it's kind of a priority because again, rank and movement up, even if it is family, friends, as your coaches in those places, just on beach bars and Chicology, it is a marker and a small win of success and forward motion for you. And it's, and it's social proof that what you're doing is legit. So those are the reasons why I really strongly suggest that you do work towards a rank as a goal and success club as your monthly goals so, so that you're always in forward motion and you're either hitting a goal or you're redefining your goal that you want to use a daily worksheet tra uh, tracker. So if you're in platinum presenters university in there, there's multiple ones, but one of the most basic one is called the daily weekly activity tracker worksheet. And you can just check off what you do every day. It's not a matter of, do you have to do all those things on the left sidebar? It's just get a gauge of where you're spending your time every week so you know where your time is spent and where you need to adjust 
to be able to have greater success. And as well as your conversations. I personally use Streak. It's a Chrome extension with Gmail. And with Streak, by the way, there's a complete tutorial in Platinum Presenters University teaching you how to set it up. With that, there's so many times, because we're ending the month, we're ending the month, and there's so many times where, in my mind, I'm like, oh, I need to finish with my success club. Who was I talking to? I can't remember. But Streak is always keeping track of every conversation that I have and where we left off in the conversation. There's two ways of building your business. And running a challenge group is great. Putting up great social media content is great. That's not what's going to build your business. What is going to build your business is prospecting and attraction marketing. So those two things have to work together at the same time. But the most important one that you focus on is prospecting. So I'm going to divide them up into two different ways and walk you through an exact system of what you can do to make sure that you know and have a handle on both of them. To give you a gauge, prospecting is when you go out there and ask someone to look at the business. Attraction marketing is where people are going to come to you and say, hey, what do you got going on? So that's kind of the two ways that you're going to be building your business. And attraction marketing is also considered the reverse invite because they're asking you to be a part of what you have going on. So let's go through that part first. So attraction marketing is defined as identifying your target market by understanding the one problem you solve. And this, don't get so caught up on it. Here I am 11 years into the business and I still keep adjusting and questioning exactly what is the one thing I'm known for? What is the one problem that I solve for people because I feel I'm a jack of all trades. I can help people in a lot of different areas. Doesn't mean I should. Make sure that you know, hey, you can be skilled in so many areas, but where I'm focusing is I'm trying to define, but what is the one thing that people know that they can come to me for and they'll get that problem solved. So that's something you have to constantly keep massaging, but work towards creating it. And I've got a little exercise in here that might help you get a better understanding of what to do. The second thing is you have to create something that they want. And we're going to go through these all. Third thing is share with them how to get it. The fourth thing is give it to them. And the fifth is then have a follow-up system that stays connected and leads them to a deeper connection with you. So what does this look like? And I wrote out an example of what it might look like. So the first one was your target market. So a target market for someone might be a parent who is between the ages of 35 and 45. Really define your age group. That's not saying I can't work with 20-year-olds. That's just saying the perfect person is this age demographic. So I'm trying to talk to parents between the ages of 35 and 45 who have kids that are in club or travel sports and helping them with eating healthy. So that might be my demographic. That might be my specialty. That's the thing that I do naturally without thinking is I travel around with my kids and I really see the struggle of trying to bring healthy food and find food and nourish nourish the athlete on the road. Like that might be my thing. So that's your target market example. The second part of it, again, is create something that they're going to want. So what would someone who is in that demographic want? Well, maybe you could create a PDF that has simple meal plans or travel tips or how to find last second meals while they're traveling. Then the third thing is, well, how do they get it? You have to have some way to deliver a system. Just like I put in here in Google Drive, the link for you to go and download this document right here, Google is free. So you can download Google Drive and it's free. The negative is that you have to manually send it. That's the negative. So it's not working while you sleep. It, basically, you have to wake up and see the notifications and then do the work to send the people what they wanted. The better chance for you to have someone follow through with you is if you can deliver what they want immediately when they want it. So put the shoe on the other foot. Have you ever signed up for something? And when you signed up for it, you gave your information. They said they'll email it, email it to you. And then you go to your email and you keep refreshing and that never comes. You think there's a problem and then you forget about it. And then maybe it went to junk and you never even found it at all. And then you never got what you wanted. So the best thing is, is to make sure that you have a system that when someone completes your little sign up form, 
that once they hit submit, it automatically goes to whatever service you're using and that automatically sends them whatever you promised them. That's the best option. I personally use Aweber and leadpages.net. But again, Google Drive is a free service. And when you're just getting started with your business, use free as much as you can. All right, but just remember, you're going to have to um, push that over to that. Always have a template master email. So you're not writing up the same email that you're sending the person. So you always have a master. And that's why with Aweber or Lead Pages, you set up those templates automatically and it does it for you. So it works while you sleep. And the following part is you have to have a follow-up system messaging them. And my advice is to message and follow up with them after three days, after a week, after another week. Because your goal and these follow-up messages are this. The first message that you're sending them is giving them what you promised them. So if you just ran a Facebook Live and said, hey, I've got my son off doing soccer and we got to go three hours out of town. I have a quick cheat sheet that I use to help find healthy foods in, on the road. If you want to get it, just put in the comments below, send info. And then you would know that those people want you to go and manually send it over to them. Or you can tell them what link to go to. Just go to gettravelfood.com and download the free PDF. You want to be able to give it to them. So that would be like the first email that you're going to have. Now, what's called an autoresponder or a follow-up sequence is you can't expect someone's going to want to get the information from you one time and then stalk you. That's not going to happen. It takes someone about seven times to see something before they make a decision. So if you ever sent someone information about your challenge group or coaching or a product, and then they went MIA, and you never really followed back with them with valuable information, people are not going to knock on your door to do what you want them to do. You have to offer valuable information. Follow-up system. So say, for instance, I send them that first email. The three days later, what I might send them is a message that says, hey, I just found this great cooler bag that works for us while we're traveling on the road. It, this is the cooler bag. You're giving them helpful tips. I'm not saying, hey, and then join my challenge group. So you want to avoid pushing your agenda. You want to be helpful. And then the next week, again, you will then give them another email. Now, this is the one where it starts to kind of blend. The next one might be saying, hey, we're going off on some trips this weekend and I've been eating on the road too much. What I noticed is that I am packing on a few pounds. If you're noticing that too and you want to join a group that I'm putting together to eat clean for a month or whatever, give me a shout back. So you're not basically selling to them. You're still being real life of an interest that they're interested in, but you're letting them know reality that you got other things that can help support them too. Now the quick exercise, this I'm just going to quickly tell you, if you're wondering, what is the one thing that I'm supposed to talk about? What, what am I about? What is my brand? Who is my target market? Here's a quick little exercise that's in this document. What I listed are a bunch of words. And the first five words that you feel kind of define you or feel connected to you, those five words together collectively should be the topics and type of content that you put out because you're connected to those words. So it might be uh, purpose, optimism, laughter, family, um, challenge. You know, those might be some of the words that are connected to you. And now when you have those five words off to the side, always look at all the type of content that you're putting up. Does it fall in that line? Does it make someone laugh? Does it talk about having a positive attitude towards waking up and working out? You know, so always stay in line with the words that mean something to you. And that will steer you in the right course of figuring out who you are and who your target market is. Well, how does this all work? Well, the first thing on social media, and you've probably heard this many times before, and always know that everything you learn is always going to change. There's no right way. It's kind of right way right now, but tomorrow it might be wrong. So always be open to change and do things differently. When Beachbody hired on a trainer for helping coaches be able to share the business, he developed this system called the game plan. And with the game plan, his rule, and it was every day, you at least had to share the business with two people. Now, way back when, that was about nine, 10 years ago, 
what we had were these little DVD discs that talked about coaching. We didn't have all the online videos and all of that. Basically, people had to sign up for webinars or get these DVD discs. So what we would buy as coaches are these bundle packs of these DVD discs. And because the game plan said, share the business with two people per day, basically on my agenda was every day I had to at least get two new people to look at the business. And I swear not, but I was pregnant, so this is my excuse as to why I was going through the McDonald's drive through line, but that's what I did. I was so horrible at it because I was trying to force something that felt icky to me. But I remember going through the McDonald's drive through and getting a shake and then telling the cashier, hey, if you're interested in a business, here. And I like whipped it to her like a, a Chinese star, these little DVD discs. And I would zoom off because I was so freaked out about telling people about this. It didn't feel natural to me. I was trying to do something that icked me out. But, but I was already a coach and I was already successful. I already had like a five-star diamond plus team. But then I started to revert back to what they were trying to make us do, which was okay for some people, but did not do good for me. So always understand that everything that you're learning, you have to massage to feel good for you. So now let's go into, well, how does all of this attraction marketing work? First thing is, is creating curiosity. Don't use brand names anymore. So stop holding Shakeology up close to your face and the shaker cup so easily red. People can Google and figure out what that is and buy it elsewhere. They don't need to buy it from you just because they saw that on your shaker cup. So start to be more secretive and evasive. Every time I'm showing my collagen powder, I never show the label. I always have it spun around. And I'll talk about it. I'll say collagen, but I don't say beach body collagen. I don't say my Shakeology. I say my superfood shake or my meal replacement or my protein shake. So what category does what you want to talk about fall into? It doesn't have to be my meltdown workout. Everyone can Google meltdown and they can see the free workout on YouTube. So let's try to change the language to be more curious for people to ask you, what is this workout that you're doing for 100 days? Or what is the collagen that you're putting in? What is your favorite kind? Start going into the general side to create conversation on the back end. And that's where people are going to come to you. And the second part of it is, again, really sticking strong to digging into their problem, their pain point, and how you might be able to help that. Because if you're always speaking from a place of, I've, I'm successful and I'm amazing and I've got all things figured out, then people are not going to connect with that. People love the struggle. That's why in a movie, you always work for the underdog. That is where people are going to connect. So always make sure that you're speaking from a place of what they might connect with. So always ask yourself before you're posting, before you're asking, what do people need to know to help them move forward with me, to be curious about wanting to move forward with me? What's holding them back or keeping them stuck? What's some critical information that they're missing that they just keep wondering, what am I missing? If you're talking about, hey, I've got a challenge group starting and I'm going to have 10 more people do this with me, that's not going to create interest for people. What you want to put out there is a struggle. If you've been trying to um, get rid of inflammation, if you've been trying not to eat so many snacks at night, I've got a challenge group that we're going to be really working on that. So always define a problem rather than saying, I got this going on because that's just advertisement. So now the best kind of media that you can do that's going to uh, use attraction marketing is live video. Second is video. Third is a photo. What you want to do is focus on videos, posts, and Facebook groups. Now what I included in here is a template that is going to help you know how should you always phrase a live video or how should you talk in a video? How should you write your post out on your Instagram post? It should always follow a formula that is going to connect with people. And the basics part of the formula is an opening. And the opening will be something that is relative to you. I never thought that I would like to do home workout videos because that would be me. So that's the first part. The backup story is the second part. And that's where I can say, I used to be that person that thought that people who worked out to home videos were really soft and they really weren't fitness people. That you went to the gym to get a real workout. That's what I used to think. So you're giving the backup as to why you define that problem and the realization and change. So this is where then I would bring in my story is after the birth of my second child via C-section, I did not want to go to the gym. I was embarrassed. I could barely fit in my clothes 
And I knew that I had to try to get this baby weight up. Thankfully, I had these home videos that I plugged into and I committed by telling social media that I was going to do this workout for 90 days to lose the baby weight. Watch me. And that's the truth because that was me with Shalene Extreme. That was my backstory that made me see the difference. And I proved it worked because I lost the weight. So the message and the result is how I proved it and how I was so wrong in thinking a workout video couldn't be a serious workout. And the call to action is basically inviting people to do something with you next, telling them what do you want them to do. And it doesn't always have to be shoot me a message and tell me you want to be a part of the challenge group. It could be just something like, hey, put a heart in my comments if this has ever been you. So you just want them to take action and be with you. That's your goal. But be very clear in that. So a bad example, just to give you an idea on that, is people are not interested in learning how to lose weight. They're not. They know how to lose weight. You probably have lost weight multiple times. I know I have lost weight a lot of times in my life. That's not what they're interested in. What they're interested in is how is working with you going to be different this time? How is this product going to be different this time? How would coaching really be different and change my life in any degree? I'm not going to think so much about I need to just lose weight. For those who are looking for the quick win are the ones that are going to be quickly gone from using your products and coaching if you just sign them up with that. Remember, the company or the product that you've used is not what got you where you are. So those people who get tattoos for P90X or whatever workout and claim that that is what got them there. Or me, if I said being a coach gave me this life. No, it didn't because there's 400,000 people signed up as coaches. It's the decision I made to do what was difficult to do what others won't do. And that's why that is possible. It's proof. It's possible this works. But not everybody's willing to work it. And that's truth. So if you look at every network marketing company out there, there's a few people who are achieving success. And there's a lot of people that are not really growing a huge level of success. But that's normal. Your level of success and what you define as success is going to be completely up to you. Money is not going to be it. A title is not going to be it. You have to define what does success mean to me? And not everybody needs to make six figures because what success means to you is being a part of something, feeling inclusive, seeing the mark success, finding a system that works for you and really finding like-minded people that make you happier and that you develop and grow yourself as a person. I know in my medical job, it wasn't required or normal or even encouraged for me to do any personal development. That's not normal. But in this space, it is. But doesn't that make you feel so much better about yourself because you're improving yourself? You're improving your mind. You're improving your viewpoint, your optimism. Like You're improving what's possible. That's different. And to me, that part about coaching is amazing because no matter what money you do or don't make, just being a part and sticking it out is better than not. I look and think about those people that have canceled and I check back into their social feeds to kind of see what they're up to. And what they're up to is they fell back into that old rut of life where they're not moving themselves forward. They're always in a drama. They're always on the yo-yo. They're always in... Uh, crappy relationships and crappy jobs and hating every day. But that's what happens because they removed the reminder. So even if you're not building a huge coaching business, don't worry about that. It will work when you do it, but it doesn't always have to be at a huge grand scale because this is positive in your life. This is a positive thing in your life. It is improving you no matter what. All right, so the final thing is this. The company is the vehicle, the products are the vehicle, but you are the one that's making the change. So something to always think about is your messaging that you're putting out there. If you speak from a place that everything is rainbows, everything's unicorn, I am so rich and I am so fit, I have no problems, and you really aren't, if you're really putting out there a fake life, it's going to be transparent. People will see right through it. And it can only last so long and it keeps chipping away at you. You start to feel 
icky inside because you have to constantly create this fake life image. Don't be fake. Be real. And there's a sense to being a filtered real side to you. I'm kind of so sick of seeing all of these images that people are putting out there where they're all slumpy over, pinching their belly fat, going, this is reality, and this is Instagram. It's been there, done that, whatever, get over it. We know that it, you can take a very unflattering picture of yourself. Just follow Ricky Gervais because he loves to take really ugly face pictures of himself in the bathtub. Everyone can take an ugly picture of yourself. But we don't need to be like, and this is real life, and then this is glam Instagram, whatever. Be real, be you, but put your best self forward. You're putting yourself out there in a filtered, real sense. Too much information sometimes is too much information. The final part of it is with attraction marketing is making sure how do they take action. You need to tell them what you want them to do. You can tell them to comment on the comments, more info, or go to a link, or send you a DM, but you need to tell them what you want them to do. People are not just going to bang on your door. Always remember, attracting marketing is something that you're going to always keep doing. But what's most important now is prospecting. This is what's going to grow your business. This is priority. If you avoid this because you don't want to talk to people that you know, then you shouldn't try to grow a team. You're not a leader. You, you just cannot lead people. If you don't find the passion and see that there's huge value in this, and that talking to people that you currently know in life shouldn't be a scary thing. It's about finding their need and offering this as an option. 